So I came out to do this uh, video and then my wife decided to clean the swimming pool. So she soaked the whole universe right where I was going to make a video. No one loves me. I'm fine. It's fine. <clears throat> She's laughing at me because she doesn't even care. No, she was all apologetic. And I'm so sorry I ruined your video. It's like it's for like two people that actually care in the universe. So hey, um, as soon as I get this thing straightened up, I am going to go through a low ball series. So high ball, last time I asked players to get something. How about a bike helmet, right? And high ball was level one, level two, level three. And to be honest, I don't remember what level four was. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, anyway. So that was high control. Now we're looking at low control. So high control means when the ball is high, we move it, which gives you lots of time because I'm pocketing the ball where I can pick up and shoot, I can pass. Low ball, you're not trying to pick up and shoot. You're trying to get somewhere real quick. So maybe you're in a crowd and you want to be down here so you can move in traffic. Low ball control is the stuff people get really excited about. So high ball control is how you play the game when you want to be highly efficient, you're in control of it. Low ball is where you get those moments where you're like, oh, ankle breaker, because you've got people reaching, you used your body as a wall. So we're gonna get there, but to start off, you gotta be able to do a few things. Base level is crossover, just a long crossover. It's gotta be outside your knees, you're in an athletic stance, your butt's low, your chest is slightly up, not all the way up and you're dribbling outside your knees. It's long. You can start small. When you can do 100 of those in a row, that's level one. And that should be possible for elementary kids, right? So level one, level two, stretch it out. Work on your control. The secret to this is, when the ball spins, you want it to make contact with the fingers while it's spinning, and it comes up into your hand. Then when you throw it down, you flick it like you're shooting it. When it comes back, it contacts the fingers, and because it's spinning, it crawls up into your hands. You want to get that going beyond the knees. Once you can do this, then you can start shifting defenders. When they see these shoulders move and the ball extend far out, they're going to want to move to that side, and then you can come back to where they left. It'll be hard for them to recover. Your body motion is already that direction. Theirs is the opposite. And that's that moment where you're like, oh, ankle breaker. But being able to do this is where that all starts. This isn't going to work on most decent players. They're gonna stay with you. They might even strip it, because right now I'm exposing my crossover. So this is level two, get a hundred of those outside your feet. The better you get, the faster you go. That's about my limit. And after you've got a hundred in a row, you can advance on to level three. Level three involves some important footwork. So I'm gonna slide slightly off screen here, but I'm gonna step, put my weight entirely on my left foot, and I'm gonna switch my feet. Step, weight on my center foot, switch my feet. So it looks like this. You need to be able to do this easy all the time. So this allows you to move your body, minimal effort. Kind of looks like we're in an aerobics class. Basketball is dance. That's all it is. Dance with some wrestling and some Muay Thai occasionally and some weightlifting. That's all. All right, so now we'll put the ball with that. First time, level three, I'm gonna ask you to move your body with the ball. So I'll put my weight up. This is how I suggest you start. Foot off the ground, ball off to the side, and I'm going to cross over, switch legs. Then do it again. Every time I dribble, I switch. Notice I'm using that hang. The ball spins up into my fingers, and that's the time in which I'm sliding. And then I slam it down. Now I have a new hang where it's spinning up into my fingers I won't do this, that's carrying. This, legal. I don't have my hand under halfway. Keep it on the side. So 100 in a row of, call these gliding crossovers. You can stay in one position, and that can fake people, but better is to go somewhere. Move your body. The lighting keeps changing. <laughs> So, all right, when you got 100 of those, great. Speed it up. If you get 100 of those, awesome. Then we're going to do those inverted or countered, meaning before I was here and I went with the ball. Now I'm going to go 
against the ball. When the ball goes right, my body goes left. This is tricky stuff NBA players do a lot. Ah, Getting a little tired, I love that. So to get the inverted going, here's my suggestion. Stand on your center leg. Last time we were opposite your weight-bearing leg. This time, same side as the weight-bearing leg. When you throw it down, you switch your body. Right now I'm staying in position. But once you've got it figured out, then you can start extending your body out. Try to cover as much ground as you can. Ah. Getting tired. Ah. So, again, same side as the weight-bearing leg. Switch the legs when you drop the ball. Switch the legs, drop the ball. Switch and drop. Drop and switch. Drop and switch. Drop and switch. Then stretch it out. As far as you can. Now let's make it game worthy. To actually be able to shake somebody who's good, you need to give them something to go for that they believe. They really believe they have to defend it or you will do something terrible to their team. Score, make a great pass, uh, get inside, get fouled. You gotta make them defend. So to make them defend, you can't just stand here like this. The things that will make people defend would be boom, 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 one, two, they will defend. Or boom, one, two. With my posture leaning in, my shoulder ducked down, looks like I'm driving. If you can get them to believe that, they will slide to defend it, and that's when you use the crossover. You'll see great players throughout time. Michael Jordan's most famous shot of all time, maybe the most famous shot ever, is that move. Got Jordan driving one way against a guy from the Utah Jazz, and he puts on the brakes er, with this drive shoulder down, and he gives a little booty tap to his defender, draws it back, hits a game-winning shot for his sixth NBA championship. But it's this move. It's not, it's not high level, but it's used at a high level. So here's what it looks like. We've done this. Did this right now to add to that we're going to split as though we're driving we're gonna split as though we're driving and to see this so we don't have lighting problems I'm too backlit hey, get over here yeah this will work all right a little bit more so I'll drop into a split every time or people call it the drop or the split um, a lot of videos you see on YouTube call it the drop but it's this position <sighs> A lot of people like to get into it from the pocket. They like to get here, shoulder goes down, look how low my knee is, I'm pushing hard to drive. But maybe I'm not. Now when I do it, most of the time I'll skip and I'll drop and I almost always go 80% because I want them to believe that. I want them to believe that. And the time I need it and the guys finally figured me out, then I draw it back and I get a wide open jump shot. So here's what it looks like, I hope. <laughs> when I glide, I'll get into my drop Looks like this, glide across, but I drop. My foot and my shoulders are coming forward. Now it's not just a crossover in the front, it's a drawback. I pull it back, so if somebody's playing defense here, they've got nothing to work with. When I draw back, I switch my feet. Now here's the cadence for that. It's cross, one, two. Or you might know, boom, one, two, to shoot. It's the same here, it's a boom, one, two. We want to move both feet when we move, when we move. be as powerful as you can. So I'm crossing on the pullback. I put my weight on my back foot and one, two. Pull back, one, two. See how my weight shifts to the back foot, right? Draw back, weight shifts to the back foot, one, two. My goal when I hit is to take this rubber band called the gastrocnemius or the calf muscle and I want it fully stretched, full elastic power and I want to almost let my heel touch. Heels should never touch, and you're popping off that. So here's the footwork. Practice this footwork with me. I'm sliding over, transition to the middle foot, weights on the middle foot, and pow! Get that powerful elastic stretch in the rear leg, and duck that shoulder. Now come back to it, pow! Elastic in the back, drop that shoulder, come back, and I'm doing this. And once you get that footwork figured out, you got a chance at one, breaking some ankles. And two, you might be able to make this work 
a hundred times in a row, which is level, I think I'm on five, right? Level five. I'd like all varsity players to get through level five. So again, breaking it down. Weight on this middle foot, balls out. Drop it, transition weight, switch feet, elastic back foot, foot far out, drop. Now I don't want this. This is not the same thing. What I do want is shift weight, pause, back front. Back front, shift weight, back front, back front, back front, back front, back front. It's slow enough that you can make decisions in it. So here it is. I'm bouncing back into my body and there's a flick there. When I bring my hand forward, I flick back like I'm shooting the ball. I want to spin it back into my body so it quickly returns to the core of my body. And I'm here, draw back, 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 draw back. Shoulder down, make them believe it. Ah, I messed up. Now as you get better, I'm drenched in sweat already, then I need you to move your body laterally. Get far left and right. Here's the best I can do. All right, first one goes out and back. Oh, I lost it. You should go so hard you make mistakes. It should be common for you to fail. Failure is how you learn. If you get discouraged by your failure and you quit, that's it, you've reached your limit. And if you're in middle school, you'll always be middle school level. If you're in JV, you'll always be JV. If you're in varsity, then your settling might be a possession at the varsity tournament. It might cost us a game. Give through failure. Do not stop at failure. See failure as, yes, I found my limit. Watch me break it, break limits. All right, God bless you as you train. Try to get through level five or four, whatever it was, but that is the, uh, sorry, it's that drawback crossover into a drop. Drawback crossover into a drop, drawback crossover into a drop. Work your way up, don't skip to the end. You'll just get discouraged and quit. Go through every level. All right, see ya.